Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Actually, welcome to my kitchen. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you guys a recipe for my favorite Ghanaian hot sauce, which is shito. And yes, I did remember saying that I'm not going to be filming any recipe videos, but I need to remake this. I might as well show you guys how I do it. It's probably one of my recipes that I feel my most accomplished. Um, just because like the recipe ingredients for the traditional version is not vegan friendly and so you have to think around like what you can use anyway enough of the rambling if you're interested to see how to make this recipe please keep watching okay so Ghana shito is not Ghana shito shito is generally a hot sauce that you can use to add onto everything it's like how black people have Tabasco how Beyonce has hot sauce in her bag Ghanaians have shito in their bags um, and it looks weird but it tastes incredible so these are the ingredients you're going to need I have ginger onions about two bulbs of garlic and scotch bonnet pepper all the quantities will be in the description box below and for my fish uh, substitute I am going to be using a blend of nori and dried mushrooms that I pulverized in my coffee grinder so it makes like a nice like it's like a green powder you can't really see it as well um, but it's going to add that umami fishy flavor that we're looking for so that's this is necessary I got this from the local Chinese supermarket so I would suggest that you get that too so okay aside from the fresh ingredients you're also going to need these uh, you're gonna need some tomato paste and um, tomato not hands you need some tomato paste just tomato paste I also using this um, instead of Maggi, Ghanians love Maggi. Instead of using Maggi, instead of using Maggi, I'm going to be using a um, vegetable broth powder by Go Bio. Um, let's see if you guys can see this. Sorry, like my camera doesn't zoom as much. Okay, so I think you can see this. It's a vegetable um, broth. Honestly, I was scammed. This, I've barely used anything, and it's like half full. They, they literally scammed us, and it's not cheap. Additionally, you can use like, I use like the bulk barn veggie bouillon cubes. I'm also going to be using a blend of all spices. It literally says allspice. Um, I got this in the market in Ghana. I, if you don't have this, the closest is garam masala um, because I think the blends are kind of similar and you're looking for a really earthy flavor. Even though we're using a lot of garlic and a lot of onions, still have garlic and onion powder just because it gives a, they're very concentrated savory flavors. And then we're gonna be using some salt but like I may not use salt just because I would I would advise you to use salt at the end just to make sure that like especially the veggie stock it has some salt in there so you don't want to make it too salty okay so that's those are the ingredients uh, let's get to cooking I forgot to mention this but you're also going to need oil warning if you are a high carb low fat vegan this recipe is not for you I'm gonna be using a lot of oil so like a cup of oil so if you don't want to see a recipe with a lot of oil I would suggest clicking to some of my low-fat oil free recipes I will link them in at the top um, you can click the bar and you can find something that's suitable for your dietary needs and you can't do this recipe without oil so I'm not doing an oil free version okay so let's let's get on this okay so let's get to cooking in a pot at medium heat i put in some oil i put about a cup and a quarter of oil i know it's a lot of oil but trust me this is very necessary i bet you this is less oil than most people use i just heated the oil at like medium heat till it was nice and hot make sure not to cover the pot because then steam will build and it will sizzle into the oil it splatters everywhere it's not good 
So when the oil was nice and hot, I added in my tomato paste. So essentially, this part is just to fry the tomato paste. You need to make sure to mix it into the oil well, just because the tomato paste is water-based, so it's going to separate a little bit. But as it starts to heat up, it's easier for it to mix into the oil. You're essentially just frying the tomato paste for about five minutes. So after the five minutes passes, you start to see that the oil turns red here you will put in your blended mixture. So I blended up the tomato, ginger, garlic, and scotch bonnet pepper with as little water as possible. You want it to be dry just so that you're not adding in a lot of water and doesn't take time to cook. And I just used a little bit of water to wash out the blender and then just combined everything together in the oil. You want to mix it very, very well because it Apparently, it just takes a lot of time. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to mix it and then cover it, and you're going to let it cook for about 25 minutes at medium heat. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, as we wait for the chateau to uh, cook, oh, I need to set my timer. You can adjust some of these to the best of your ability in terms of like, I like my food really spicy. Four scotch bonnet peppers may not be enough for me, especially they're also green, so they're not as pungent as like the red or orange ones. You can add just one if you just want like a sauce, or you can add more if you just like to burn your insides out. Um, so yeah, you can choose whatever you want to do. Um, also, as we wait, I think this is also a good oppor opportunity just to talk about my journey in trying to veganize Ghanaian food. So what I'm realizing that Ghanaian food basically has the same basic foundation. If you can get this basic foundation done, you should be good. Um, a lot of the food is tomato, ginger, onion based. You're most likely going to be blending some mixture of that to make whatever you want. For example, tomato stew, like the simple tomato stew, I have a recipe, um, you can check it out. It's basically, you always start with like onions and then you add your tomato paste, a blended mixture of tomato, onions, ginger, and garlic. So that's for tomato stew. Once you get that settled, you can make bean stew, you can make kuntumri stew, which is palava sauce, um, you can make jollof rice, you can basically make any kind of sauce once you have that settled. So the shito is not really any different. The only difference is that we're not using a tomato based sauce. We're really just adding the tomato paste, but we're not blending in tomato sauces and like fresh tomatoes. The same thing with all the different types of soup. Hopefully I'll be sharing my groundnut soup recipe on this channel soon, but it's basically the same thing. You blend some tomatoes, ginger, and onions, and you sift them, and that's basically how you make the soup. So it's pretty simple in that sense. It's just, the problem is no one has recipes. Everyone adds different amounts of onions, different amounts of ginger, different amounts of garlic, just based on your preference. Um, I like a lot of onions just because I like the sweet flavor they give when they're cooked. Um, I like a lot of pepper. If you don't like a lot of pepper, you don't like a lot of onions, you don't have to add a lot of onions. But for someone who's just like starting out, I would really suggest like using the measurements that I suggest. But basically, Ghanaian cooking is pretty much the same as we try we make it over complicated because it does take a lot of time this recipe is going to take a lot of time not in the sense of time to get it down but like time to really cook because everything is like reduced and concentrated just so to pack the flavor anyway so that's my little spiel on Ghanaian food uh, so we're gonna wait for this thing to cook for about 25 minutes um, while that's cooking I'm gonna be cleaning up and doing some work so i'll see you guys when the time is up okay so whilst it's cooking you want to make sure that you're checking so that it's not sticking to the bottom give it a good stir so that you're not burning the sauce because it can burn as you can see by the small black specks 
And then when that's done, the 25 minutes has passed, you should add all your spices and mix that in very, very well. I don't know, for some odd reason, it's just harder to stir in all the ingredients or maybe because I'm using a very small spoon. I don't know what the difference is. Anyway, mix, 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 mix very, very well. And once you've mixed in the spices, then we're going to add in the most important ingredient, in my opinion, which is the nori and dried mushroom blend. I added about a tablespoon and a half, so I didn't use everything that I showed you at the beginning. And it looks black. I swear that's not why the sauce is black. It just happens to be black because the nori is black and the he and maybe some chemical reaction. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. And you're going to stir it in very well. Again, you want to make sure that everything is well combined. Otherwise, you're going to have an evenly tasting sauce. You're going to leave this to simmer at medium to low heat for about 30 to 40 minutes. Again, all the time points are going to be in the recipe link below. Again, checking it, stirring it. If I were you, I will also taste for salt um, just to make sure that everything is well spiced. So I had it covered for about 30 minutes and then I left it uncovered for about 10 minutes again everything is going to be in the description just so it can reduce a lot more and obviously periodically stirring it i really did not want to burn this batch um, just because the burns flavor is not really what you're going for in this situation so that's pretty much it just simmering 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 away till the time is up for about like 35 40 minutes it's going to be a nice thick sauce and you can let it cool down and then transfer it into a pot or a container really usually it's kept outside of the fridge especially with the oil if it, there's a lot of oil but i like to keep mine in the fridge just because i eat it with really hot food so cooling spicy sauce is kind of nice to have so i just close that up and forgot to clean my counter so basically that's the recipe you can add this to any savory meal as a condiment it's great on rice potatoes whatever fancies you and it stores for a very long time in the fridge so that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and i will see you guys in my next video bye